what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Sting, the show that keeps you up to date with not only Alabama State football, but news and reports around the HBCU world as well. We got a lot to talk about today. So once again, here's your host, the one, the only, Jim Rather Not. And once again, we have a wild one. Hi guys, it's your boy. I'm back in the building. That's right, it's Jim Rather Not. And what a game we had down in Florida in the Tallahassee area as those Alabama State Hornets traveled down to play Florida A&M and win in a thriller. When we interviewed Joseph Cooley after the game, he was just so proud of how much fight this team showed. Now the first half was pretty shaky. It was a defensive battle. But lo and behold, the second half, oh my gosh, man. We had touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. Like this catch here by Al Vance Robinson, who had over 100 yards yet again. The man is a great player, an amazing wide receiver. Hopefully, he'll get a chance with the NFL team next season. And what about this Florida A&M offense, a.k.a. the Gulf Coast offense? Pete Guillory was absolutely amazing in this game. He had 454 yards passing along with six touchdowns. Wow, that's crazy. As for Tavares Jackson, he didn't have a great start to the game, but oh boy, did he have a great finish for it. He had 256 yards passing along with 127 yards rushing. And what about the defense? When the defense needed a big play, they stepped up to the challenge. We haven't seen that all season. What an excellent performance. But they still gave up 42 points, though. But we had Nixon get a pick. We had Neil Bryant with a pick six. Look at that as he breaks away from the receiver. Neil Bryant will be an All-American at the end of this season, people. You heard it here first. Neil freaking Bryant. Now, despite the win, we did take a big loss in this game. Matt Hill is not out for the next three games with a sprained elbow. That is a big loss. Yes, he's just a 55 overall, but we need bodies right now. And he was the best person on the edge for us, as well as Hanson. Look at this run by Johnson, though, on the screen pass. He showed those jets, even though he doesn't really have any. And what about this play right here? Ben Scott is actually making some big plays after coming back from suspension. Oh, wow. But the thing about this defense, what they needed some big stops, they got them. But they only held them up long enough for Alabama State's offense to keep the lead going. Now, the way this game ended was absolutely ridiculous. FAMU was able to get two more touchdowns in when Alabama State's offense should have been running out the clock. But they were not able to. So these last two touchdowns to Johnson and I believe the last one was to Washington. Those were not needed. It doesn't make any sense. We have to do a better job of closing games. And speaking of closing games, look at Tavares Jackson on this run as he tries to run the clock out as much as possible. The man is not only a clutch playmaking quarterback, but he's great at time management. Now look at this screen pass. I'm still mad that Neil Bryant didn't pick that off. He jumped too early. But that was a nice screen pass for FAMU as we finally win the game 48-42. Now let's look at the rest of the HBCU world. There goes Southern beating up on Prairie View. Grambling gets goose egg by Army, and Alabama A&M comes up short against Arkansas Pine Bluff, while Alcorn is now 0-5. Oh, wow, that's pretty bad there. Oh, man. And then you have Bethune Cookman getting their first win of the season over the Jackson State Tigers, and they're still 0-6. Wow. Meanwhile, over at the Sun Belt, a.k.a. the MEAC, 
South Carolina State came up short on Arkansas. Delaware State still can't win a game. Hampton comes up short in overtime to Norfolk. And Tennessee State beat Morgan State. Oh, wow. 3-3 three and three for the Tigers of Tennessee State. Oh, and look at this. Vince Young's on the cover. After Texas Longhorns defeated their long rivals, the Oklahoma Sooners, in the Red River Shootout. Oh, wow. We even have two new people that's on the Heisman watch list. You'll see Chad Henning, and there goes Mike Hart. And there goes Matt Liner, the quarterback of USC. And there goes Chris Leak, along with Zach Culver, the running back for Kansas State. Now, look at this. The SWAC, a.k.a. the MIAC Players of the Week, are Tavares Jackson and Neil Bryant. Deservedly so. Both players were absolutely amazing in Alabama State's thrilling victory over the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Meanwhile, the MIAC, a.k.a. the Sun Belt, you have John Casey for Tennessee State, and then you have Derek Hackler, the defensive tackle for the Norfolk State Trojans. Oh man, both players were beasting this past week. Now let's look at the MAC, aka the SWAC standings. As of now, Alabama State holds the best record and also first place in the West, while Texas Southern is in first place in the East. So far, that seems like an interesting matchup for the MAC SWAC championship game. I can't wait to see that. I hope we can keep this up. Now join us next time as the Alabama State Hornets are finally back home. Our first home game since Alcorn. And we got the Bethune Cutman Wildcats coming to town. Oh wow. I know how much they love the option up down there in Daytona Beach. I can't wait to see how we look in the trenches as well as our linebackers. But that's going to do it for the Sting. Go Hornets. Jim Rather not out.